What's up, insiders? Deuces Jack. I'm at vapinginsider.com. Today, we're going to be going over the Geek Vape Aegis Solo Kit. I got the one with the Tengu RDA. The big question is, do we really need another Aegis? And do we need an 18651? Make sure you watch the whole review. Find out exactly what I think. Check that out. No surprises, right? Kind of interesting. Looks like something we've seen before. Really disappointed that they went with the same, you know, kind of button on the Aegis Mini. They got rid of that rocker style button. I think that was a staple on the Aegis line. I, I think it was a great button. I would have kept it. I really would have. Uh, you know, Geek Vape is getting to be that type of company now that's kind of tone deaf, man. They don't listen to their customers lately. I don't know what their problem is, but, you know, that that rocker style button is one of the best things about the Aegis line. And why you wouldn't put it on this model doesn't make any sense. Here's your up and down button right here. You can see the screen, like most in the Aegis series, that screen protector. You know, this is a plastic piece that's actually covering your screen it scratches pretty easily, so just be aware of that. You can see I already got a couple of ding marks on it. There is no plastic piece over it. Th those are scratches to the actual plastic. Same form factor that we're used to, you know what I mean? Um, got this little metal over here, the leather with the red stitching. Nice job on that. Subtle branding. Got that rubberized, that like almost like rubber tire feel on the outer body here. You know, they do a nice job with their Aegis line. They really do. Here's something they changed from the Mini, right? That's your micro USB port. They put it down there. On the Mini, it was actually on the bottom of the mod. All right, insiders, I just wanted to show you the whole line, the whole Aegis line from Geek Vape, so I could give you some perspective. This is the OG one, okay? This is... The 26651, you can run it with this battery cap that you see on it with a uh, 21700. This battery cap is a separate accessory. It'll allow you to do that. What they should have done was they should have made this in a 21700 and given you an 18650 adapter for the people who still run 18650s. But you can see what I'm talking about, man. I wish they would have kept that fire button I wish they would have kept almost everything the same, just slim this thing down a little bit and make it in 21700 form. But this is the OG one. They kind of like went more towards the mini version, right? Because see the mini with the internal battery? Very, very similar. Just can't put a battery in this one. But, you know, same, you know, regular type of fire button, no rocker style, you know, almost the same exact form factor just a little taller and here it is next to probably what my most used and favorite Aegis is this is the legend this is the dual 18651 again I wish they'd make a dual 21700 one that would be kind of cool but you know you could see you know it's almost half the size of the legend and that would make sense since it takes half the amount of batteries but I just wanted to show you the whole line so you could get an idea about the progression of the Aegis line. Let's go over the top side of the Aegis Solo. You can see we got a stainless steel plate here, star screws holding it in place. All right. I would call this a medium throw with a stiff spring to it on the gold plated 510. Nice smooth stainless steel threading around that. And on the bottom right here, you can see we got some battery venting. And this is your battery cap right here. You kind of just got to give it. You know, maybe a twist and a half, maybe two full twists, and it opens right up. Negative marking right there. I guess they marked it the best they could. There's a positive, a, a red positive marking on the bottom, although I don't know if you could see it. You can see on the battery cap, they put a big washer over there to make it waterproof, all right? This thing is waterproof, dustproof, shockproof, just like all the others in the Aegis line. Five clicks to turn it on, and there you go. All right. Pretty simple screen. We've seen it all before. Power, wattage. There's your battery meter, resistance, amps, volts, and puff counter. All right. We've all seen this chip before. Three clicks. 
See the power is highlighted. Now I can scroll between power, TCNI, TC stainless steel, TC titanium, TCR. There's my curve, bypass, and power mode. Right? If I want to adjust the resistance, I just hit the button and it scrolls so that I can reset the puffs right there. If I want to get out of the menu, I just hold the power button down. Hold the minus and plus button together to lock or unlock the mod. When you lock the mod, you're only locking it for wattage. You can still fire. Now this does scroll all the way up to 100 watts. It does round robin, and there you go. That's basically the whole menu system. Here's the Tengu RDA. Check it out. Good looking RDA. Honeycomb, almost pyramid shaped type of airflow there. I'm digging that. A little bit of a graphic over there. Same type of airflow on the other side. Ultum 810 drip tip. All your other goons will fit fine. Has a nice snug fit to it. On the bottom, you can see it says Tengu. Gold plated 510. Insulator ring around that. Stainless steel threading around that. And it's serialized. Kind of conical design inside. It does look like it com comes apart, but it does not. This is a one piece barrel system. Now, in order to adjust the airflow, right? Let me show you something. You see, you got your little notch there for the locking barrel system. And you see the little notches in there? Okay. What you're going to do is, it's kind of ingenious the way they did it. When that little notch hits the lock, you're going to be able to spin that so the airflow will adjust. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You put it on, spin it till it snaps down, right? Now the airflow is wide open. Now watch as I turn it. See it closing off? See that? Hard to see because it's black on black. But right now, it's all the way shut down. Okay, if I open it up, I just turn it the other way a little bit, and you'll see. See if I can angle it. Very hard to see on camera, but that's you can see my finger through the other side. It's opened halfway. And, of course, the same thing happens on the other side as well. The deck, basically, kind of like a T-post deck. But if you look at the deck as a whole, it's almost a variation of a velocity-style deck, right? You got... You know, two lower posts, two upper posts. The screw goes in on an angle here, goes in flat here. I guess it goes in on an angle so you don't crush your leads too much. Not a bad design, but like I said, almost like a velocity style. Nice, deep juice well, decent sized juice well, no issues with that. Also included in the packaging, you get a micro USB cable, white and flat. It's a rather nice cable. You get some N80 fused Clapton's, omen out at Point four. You get this nice little coiling jig and this extra spare plug for the mod for the USB port. That's kind of neat. Now here's something interesting, okay? You get the spare parts back, right? And you get a tri-tool hex key, okay? And you get a 510 drip tip adapter, some spare O-rings, um, a shorty style drip tip, okay? Some spare deck screws. But you also get a squonking pin. And when I first saw the post on this atomizer, I was like, wow, you can't squonk on it. Well, let me show you something. I took the post out because I noticed the squonking pin. See those little holes right there? You can squonk on it. That's why it comes with a squonking pin. Kind of cool, man, because when I first saw this installed like this, I'm looking at it and I'm going, where are you squonking from? But you can squonk on it. Okay, let me put this on my trusty coil master. And let's take these coils and the cotton that they gave us and let's try them out. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up those post holes nice and wide. See how nice and wide they are now? They're nice and open, right? Now, what we're going to do, we're going to take our first coil and we're going to use a bottom terminal and a top terminal. And we're going to pop it in there just like that. Let's use our coiling rod. Try to get it in there and twist it the way we want it. All right, you want to pull that, kind of want to get it in there just like that, situate it, okay? And now we're going to keep our coiling rod in there, and we're going to tighten down those terminals just like that. Don't worry about the coils. We're going to fix them. Once they're in there, get your flush cutter. Make sure you hold on to those leads so they don't go flying everywhere. Get in there and give it a snip. Now you take your other coil, same thing, one on top. One on bottom, just like that. They go in a little funky. Take your coiling rod, get it in there, and press them in there nicely, just like so. Now, 
We're going to tighten down the side one first because it's a little easier. And now we're going to keep our finger on that other one and we're going to tighten down the top lead. Okay, get in there with our wire clipper. Give it a nice clip. Same thing on the other side. And there we go. Now we're looking kind of janky. That's okay. We're going to fix that. Get in there and put those coils right down there. That's kind of where you want it, right there. Okay, same thing on the other side. Get your coiling rod in there. Kind of even them out a little bit. That's how you want it to look, just like that. All right, maybe this one can come down a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Now, you can see we're oming out at 0.13. Let's burn these coils in. There we are, all burnt in, all built nice. Let's wick this thing up. Take a nice piece of cotton, get it pointy on one end, send it through, just like that. Take your scissor, and you want to cut it right around there. You don't need long wicks on this one. All right, same thing there, right around there. You're good, as long as it's touching the bottom of the juice well. Turn it around. We're going to use the other side as a guide. Boom. Boom. Okay, now comes the easy part. Take whatever cotton tool you use. And just give it a tuck and roll, just like that. Tuck and roll. See that? Very easy. Turn the atomizer around, tuck and roll, just like so. Create a little bit of space, and that's it, man. You're built and wicked. Let's use some custard bomb. All right, you guys know I love my custard. Let's get those wicks started. Get some juice in that juice well so it starts to sop up that juice. Get those coils nice and wet. All right, let's see if we got vapor. Oh yeah, we got vape. Stuff smells delicious. We'll pop that top cap back on. Let's put it on the mod. Let's see how it vapes. Let me give you one more quick look at it all put together. Definitely a nice looking kit, man. All right, insiders, let's get into them cons and pros on the Aegis Solo Kit. First con's gonna be, and I'm gonna get into it a little later. Yeah, man, this should have been a 21700 mod. Geek vape, you're getting a little tone depth. Got to chalk up a con to that one. They put a dual coil Addy in this kit. And it's a great atomizer. Don't get me wrong. Flavor on it is fantastic. The problem is on a single battery mod, you're going to kind of be forced to build high so you don't have to rip through the wattage on it. Like, let me give you an example, right? The coils they included are 0.21 coils, right? That's what they're oming out right now, 0.21. I'm running this thing at 85 watts on a single battery. I'm just going to rip through the battery on this thing. And it's not even where I would normally run this build. I'd probably run this build closer to 90, 92 watts. So, you know, if you were going to put an RDA in this kit, you probably should have went with a single coil RDA. And I, I feel bad saying that because this RDA is fantastic in the flavor department. We'll get into that a little later as well. I can't believe they didn't put the Rocker style button from the OG <clears throat> Aegis on this mod. That's a con. Not crazy about that old school screw-in type of battery cap. Mm. Yeah, they lessen the threads on it. It's nice. It works well. But I, I just don't like them. I wish they would have come up with something different. But that's it on the cons. Let's move on to the pros because we got some pros. First pro is going to be, man, it's an Aegis. It's built like a brick shit house. You can drop this thing. You can put it under water. You know, it's dust proof. We didn't go through all that because we know what, what the Aegis line is capable of. It's worked before in the past. It works now on this mod. Just a bulletproof mod. Nice job, Geek Vape. 28 millimeters without any overhang. I mean, you, I'm, not, I'm not sure you're going to run 28 millimeter tanks on this thing with a single battery. But it's nice that you can put some bigger atomizers on it without any overhang. It's got that proven chipset, that AS100 one. Fantastic job at that, Geek Vape. We got to give you a pro for that. It's a nice form factor, man. Feels great in the hand. They just did a good job with the form factor. It's like a bigger version, slightly bigger version of the Aegis Mini. Feels great in the hand. Good job, Geek Vape. It's aesthetically pleasing to look at. It's good looking. Pro. I like the fact that when you compare it to the Aegis Mini, they relocated that charge port. They didn't put it on the bottom. They put it on the side and they gave you an extra plug. That's a pro. And the last pro is going to be the overall build quality of it. They did a great job on it. You know, like I said before, it's bulletproof. People are going to like this mod, especially people that drop their mod and are generally rough on their mods. This is something that's going to be great for you, especially if you can vape within the parameters 
of a of a single 18650. You're going to be fine with something like this. If you're vaping at under 60 watts, this is a good mod for you. That's it on the pros and cons insiders. Let's get into our original question. Do we really need another Aegis mod, especially a single 18650 mod? I'm going to be straight up with my subs, all right? Why they didn't make this in 21700 form, I can't understand. Don't tell me it's because, you know, the 21700 isn't popular. You know, it's only popular among hobbyists and the regular vapor doesn't want to buy other batteries. Then you know what? Make it in 21700 form and put a freaking adapter in there and let the people who don't want to vape on 21700s use the adapter. For you to come out with a mod like this when you could have banged it out just a little longer, made it a little bigger, and done it in 21700 form, it's just ridiculous, Geek Vape. It just shows that you're, you're one of those companies, you're getting a little too big for your britches, and you're getting tone deaf. Because this is not what the consumer wanted. The consumer wants a 21700 Aegis, and you should have answered the call. I will say this, though, about the Atomizer. This is the first time I ever vaped on the Tengu Atomizer, and I got to tell you something, man. What a fantastic Atomizer. Really, really nice flavor. Super smooth airflow. I was so happy that I found out that it has a swonking pin in it because I'm going to tell you right now, the first thing I'm going to do when this video is done, I'm going to install the swonking pin and I'm going to put this thing on one of my favorite swonkers. That's how good the Atomizer is. The Atomizer is absolutely fantastic. I just don't think it pairs well with this particular mod. But boy, am I glad I got this Atomizer. So it was a nice, pleasant surprise to get this Atomizer with this kit it doesn't they don't work well together because you kind of got to be conscious and build higher in order to get the most out of this atomizer but man what a nice atomizer so if you have the opportunity either buy the aegis solo with the sub ohm tank in it because that's a great sub ohm tank or buy the tengu separately because the tengu is a fantastic rda trust me when i tell you let's go over some of the specs on the Geek Vape Aegis Solo Kit, it measures in at 86.4 by 41.2 by 31.5 millimeters. It is a single 18650 100 watt mod that will fire down to 0.05 ohms. All the TCs are included, plus curve mode, TCR, and bypass mode. It's available in black, gunmetal, red, orange, blue, and green. It comes with the Geek Vape Tengu RDA, 24 millimeters of diameter, dual post atomizer with two terminals per post that has a nice deep juice well. Big shout out to Element Vape for sending this one my way. Make sure you check out the link down below. Awesome company with great customer service and fantastic pricing. Don't go anywhere, insiders. Before you go anywhere, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and head on over to our brand new Facebook group because we got a 10,000 sub giveaway going on right now. That's right. Can you believe it? We're at 10K already. I can't believe it myself. We're going to be giving away some awesome, awesome prizes. The prizes are as follows. Third place, there's going to be five winners of that for a $25 coupon code at Direct Vapor. Second place, there's going to be one winner of a $100 coupon code at Vape Wild. And first place is going to be a $200 coupon code at Element Vape. We're going to let it run for a couple of weeks. Then we're going to pick the winners. So make sure you head on over to our Facebook page and join up. And that's it, insiders. That's all I got for you guys today. You keep living that vape life. We're out of here. Deuces. What's up, insiders? Deuces Jack with VapingInsider.com. Today, we're going to go over the top 10 best vape tanks on the market as of April 2019.